In this video, the auditor is following the audit trail to verify what is the current process capability of one of the organization's manufacturing processes. Watch this video and see whether the auditor does this effectively. So continuing, uh, we've looked at the statistical chart for this product where yep. you're measuring that but, dimension there. Yeah. I now want to move on to process capability. Okay. Can for the customer specifics for this customer, can you tell me what is their capability requirement? Yes, yes, so PPK 1.67. So that, the, the expectation would be uh, 1.67. Okay, so PPK 1.67. Yeah. Now I see from the software here, you do some statistical analysis. Yeah. Explain to me what is the current process capability for this so process? Currently, we are running at 1.85, so CPK of 1.85. So we're, from our point of view, that will be seen to be in control, capable process. Right, but that's CPK. Yeah. Uh, didn't you just read from your customer specific, they require PPK? Yes, they do. Um, to be honest, we use those interchangeably. This software only gives us a, a CPK um, indice. We don't have PPK on here, but we see it in the same way, if, if that makes sense. So we right. would say 1.85 is more than And just basic statistical techniques then, what would you interpret as the difference between CPK and PPK? So again, I'm going to have to go back to my um, training. I've been doing this a number of years now, but um, CPK is subgroup, average of the subgroup, um, whereas I think PPK is taking the individual differences. But I would have to check in a, a textbook. Right, but the issue here is the customer is asking for one indices and you're measuring another. Yes. Which gives me significant yeah. concern. Yeah. Just one other thing I want that we see the CP value is yeah. much higher than the CPK. Yeah. Can you explain why? So it, as you can see on the on the chart here, we're using a very sort of narrow band of the specification. So the potential for the process is is the, the capable um, process. But what do you mean by the potential? So in other words the amount of tolerance that we're using within our process is way within the um, spec. So we could replicate that many times within the specification limit. Right. So I'm going to be following up on that because one of the requirements is about understanding of basic statistical concepts yeah. and obviously you're playing a key role here yes. in interpreting yeah. this statistical data. Yeah. So we will follow we'll up on that. Okay. So let's summarise. The good thing is that the auditor made reference to customer specific requirements for process capability because indeed in ATF16949 there is no capability value or no capability indices specifically mentioned. That will be determined either by the organization, but also taken into account customer specific requirements. And in this audit simulation, we found that the process capability was being measured in CPK and the current value shown by the organization was 1.85. Whereas the customer specific requirements mention the capability indices of PPK and the minimum requirement for that was 1.67. When the auditor started to question the organization representative on this, they appeared not to have a detailed understanding of what is the true difference between CPK and PPK. So let's summarize the key learning point. ITF16949 does not mention any specific capability indices or specific capability value. So in an audit, an auditor should question what is the acceptance value for process capability taking into account customer specific requirements. In this particular case, the capability was being measured as CPK but the customer specific requirements are PPK. So that indeed was not acceptable to meet the customer specific requirements.